Hey YouTube, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and today is a 28 of the 30 day video challenge. We're in the home stretch. Today's video is about some of the basic hand tools needed to make a knife from scratch. I've had a lot of comments as well as emails lately, people just asking questions, looking for information. I think that's fantastic. So what I thought I would do, today I'm gonna put together a little list, I'll put the list in the comments below, a full description of it, of just some of the basic tools and what I would consider the minimum you need to make a knife. Now most of these are available at hardware stores, big box, store, tool stores, they're not hard to come by. I'm going to omit belt grinders in this video as well as any type of specialty tools for making a knife. So kind of a online slash YouTube uh, knife making class if you will. Anyways, I'm kind of excited about that. I hope you will be too. Uh, like I say, if you've never made a knife before, you've always wanted to, watch this video, get all the tools on that list, gather it up, borrow them, buy them, any way you can procure them. If you have more than this, great. Then in about a week, we'll go ahead and make a filing jig so you can put a bevel on your blades. And after we've got that done, probably another week, then we'll go ahead and actually make a knife. We're talking in three weeks time, you could have your very first knife made. Anyways, let's get started on today's subject matter, some of the basic hand tools. Now, one of the first things I'd like to talk about quickly when you're designing a knife is that you design the knife. I've had a lot of people ask for copies of templates for some of the knives that I've made, and I've sent them, and it, it doesn't bother me at all. But the one thing I would say is if you're gonna get into making a knife, wouldn't you want it to be your own design? I'm gonna stop sending people my templates for that reason. I don't want to take away from their creativity by using somebody else's idea. Um, I read that once when I first started making knives. I saw a video, it might have been Walter Sorrell's, it might not have been, but basically they're saying that your knife should be your design, and I was kind of a little ticked off by that because, well, it's, it's hard to draw knives, and every single knife I've made has been drawn by myself, and I'm not an artist. I have a scrapbook that I keep, and I just basically in here, just a book of weird random designs different knives that I have drawn up. Some I've made, some I will never make. The point being, every single one of these are blades that I have designed. Now, I'm not a great artist. I can't just sit down and draw great, great looking blades. So one thing that I've found that really helps me out, these French curves and various drafting template stencils. This one apparently looks like it's for drawing airplanes. This is a very common one. I think these are not very hard to find. French curves, I believe they call them. What I'll do when I'm designing a knife is I'll take out some of the dimensions. I'll find another knife. Obviously you pull inspiration from other knives, but when you want to design your own, what I will do is very often measure the knife that I would like to create something similar. If you have a knife that feels great in your hand, you love the handle size, you love the blade length, go ahead and copy some of those critical dimensions. Write them down on a piece of paper. What I'll do is I'll actually measure that out on a piece of paper and just start coming up with the general sense of how I want the handle shape to be, everything else. And then you can go back with these and actually start putting in some really nice looking, very smooth, uh, consistent curves, lines, straight lines, use a straight edge. But basically if you get your, your dimensions down and you just start drawing it in, with the use of these tools you can actually create very nice looking blades. And like I'm gonna show you right here, some of these, okay? That was not freehand, that was with French curves. Knives like this, I could never draw that freehand, but by manipulating my French curves and other tracing templates and tools, I'm able to actually draw some knives that have nice clean sweeping lines to them and they don't look that terrible. So that would be the first thing I would suggest when you wanna do some knife making. When we do this little neck knife, make whatever shape you want. I'm not gonna put the template up for this. Here's a close up of it. You can start drawing something similar, but ultimately it doesn't even matter because this is just what I'm gonna make. You could make a bigger blade, a smaller blade. I would suggest when you're making your knives that your first ones be sort of small. It's just easier. There's a lot less work. If you start out with like a 10 inch blade that you're filing by hand, you might be completely discouraged, exhausted, and throw the thing away before you actually finish it because filing a knife by hand is a lot of work. So, now that you've got some basic designs done, sketched out, let's go look at some of the tools we'll need to build them. 
Basically, we've got our design done. We have a piece of steel that we want to lay out our knife onto. You're going to want a decent square. This is a combination square. Something that uh, is adjustable is ideal. You don't want those triangular framing squares. Those aren't really well suited to, to making knives. These are nice. This is a 16 inch. Doesn't need to be this big by any means, but it's nice because this part will come off and you've got a nice steel rule as well. Now, one thing when using a straight edge from your square to do your measuring, that does work. But sometimes it's hard to get very precise markings using a straight edge and a scribe. For that reason, I'm gonna put this tool in here and this might seem a little bit excessive for basic tools, but the amount that I use this, I feel it justifies to be in a list of one of the minimum things that I would like to have when I'm making knives. Even before to buy a belt grinder, power sanding tools, other power tools to do different tasks, I would say I want a set of digital vernier calipers, especially when there's so many inexpensive options on the market that are good enough for the knife making work. Now these are emitted Toyos, and these are accurate to five ten thousandths of an inch. That's way overkill for making knives, but this is the set that I have, so that's what I use. When you're measuring your pin material, you need one of these to get a very precise uh, measurement and also when checking it against your drill bits you can measure your drill bits exactly and figure out the proper fit. Now the tips of these are all hardened and that's kind of nice because you can use it as a scribe. You can mark it on an outside and scratch lines very specifically, you know, one edge or another or even from one hole to another. If you want certain holes spaced exactly uh, two inches apart, you can do that very precisely and do a lot of layout and marking. These are not just for precise measuring, they're also for precise layout. If you had the chance, and these are getting a lot more common now, is just a small machinist square is a really handy option. Makes super easy to do very precise markings on your knives in that you can easily hold the square and the knife or in one hand and you can do your marking with the other hand. So small machinist square if you can find one, excellent. It's well worth purchasing, usually like five to ten bucks. If not, no big deal. So you've got your ways to measure lines, mark lines, now you actually need to put it onto the metal. What you're gonna want for this is a metal scribe. This is a metal scribe. It basically looks like a mechanical pencil, but it's got a carbide tip on it. This in conjunction with a large marker, jumbo sharpie or something along those lines, what you can do is actually paint the entire piece of metal that you're gonna be working with the sharpie. That way you don't have to press your scribe in quite so hard to be able to see the profile really well. When you paint it first with this, you can use like a Prussian blue or a layout dye. It just really makes the design pop a lot easier. You're not straining your eyes and you're not gonna accidentally uh, not see a line and cut right through a line when you're cutting out your knives. So once it's all laid out, marked out, obviously you just need to cut it. One of the simplest ways, a basic hacksaw. If you have angle grinders, perfect. Small Dremel tools might not be quite enough for cutting out knives, but anything that will cut your metal for you. If it's a sawzall, a hacksaw like this, a power hacksaw, whatever you have will work well. Another saw that you're gonna want is for cutting out your scale material and that's just a small jigsaw. Or if you have uh, power tools of the equivalent, it's just fantastic. So now that you've got your material cut out, you're gonna need to smooth the edges up and for that, you're just gonna need a file. Few different options here. Most of the ones available at your hardware store are gonna work well. This here is a Nicholson handy file. This is a great option as a general purpose file and it's very inexpensive and it works well. You can also use a mill file, mill bastard file. Axe files actually do work quite well. One thing when you buy a file, buy a file card at the same time. Files will last for years and years and years if you look after them and keep them clean. Files cut in only one direction. They're not cutting both ways. They're on a push stroke only. It cuts in this direction only. Use your file card, quick clean like this. Every 10 to 20 strokes, maybe more, maybe less, depending on the material you're using. If you can keep your, your files from loading up with material, they will always cut quickly and they will last you for years and years and years. That's one thing you're gonna need is a file. Also, you're gonna want different sizes of round files for adding different features. All depends on what features you wanna to add to your knife. And one thing that's actually quite handy, needle files or jeweler files. Um, they come in little sets like this most of the time, very inexpensive, I would say less than 10 bucks, but you've got like your flat, you've got half round, round, triangular, square, all different types of options. It all depends on the features you want to add to your knife. Very valuable little tools when you're making knives. One other tool that's not necessarily but can save a lot of time is a deburring tool. I've had a quite a few questions about this. That's all they're called is just deburring tools. They basically have a replaceable insert here and what you do is basically when you drill a hole 
rather than having to get a countersink or a larger bit to take the burrs off the edge, so you basically just run it around like that and you can completely deburr that hole very quickly. Not a must have, you certainly don't need it to make a knife, but worth getting in my mind. So now that you've cut out your knife blank, you've got it filed and smoothed off, you need to lay out some holes, whether it be for pin material, to lighten it up, maybe you don't need holes at all. If you do, you're gonna want a couple things, ideally. Obviously a hammer can be quite a useful tool marking your holes and center punching. Center punch is just a punch like this with a cone end on it, and it basically makes a dimple that helps the drill bit start so your drill bit doesn't walk all over your material. Another option for these are these automatic center punches. Now that we've got our holes marked and we do need to drill holes, we're gonna talk quickly about drill bits. The more drill bits you have on hand for knife making, the more options you have for what you're gonna use for pin material, different ways to lighten your handle, where your scales will cover it up, or different features you might wanna put on the blade. Whatever you need to drill holes for, obviously the more bits you have, the more options you have. Now drill bits are something that you get what you pay for always. If you buy really poor quality drill bits, something that they will do that's really gonna frustrate you is they will burn your material just like these ones did. It's better off, in my opinion, to only have the sizes that you need for sure. Just have one good quality drill bit for every size you need, rather than an entire index of junky drill bits. Spend some decent money on drill bits, even if it only means buying a handful of drill bits, rather than an entire index. Don't go for the cheap stuff. Finally, once you've got all your holes drilled, you're ready to do your bevel, which obviously you're gonna use your file for that. The next thing you're gonna need is sandpaper and you're gonna need lots of it. A lot of different options for that here. You can go out and buy just your regular packs from, these are from, these are from Canadian Tire. But basically what size I would say you will need, a 220 and a 400, that is what I do 90% of my sanding with. Start out at 220, step it up to a 400 if you want a nicer finish. Beyond that, 800, 1000 if you want. There's really no point in going much more above that unless you plan on taking it to a mirror polish. And the one most important tool I would say in knife making is the bench vise. This isn't a really high-end one, I do have a better one, but it doesn't have a swivel base. Swivel base is really important when you're making knives. The most important tool, in my opinion, when you're making a knife is a bench vise. So with all the comments and emails that I've received, uh, people wanting information, uh, telling me that they're just getting into knife making or that they want to get into knife making, but they don't know where to start, this is a good place to start. Start right here, right now. I'm not an expert, I'm not a master bladesmith, I will never claim to be. I can make knives my whole life long and still not know all there is to know about making knives. The biggest thing when I started making knives is that I was intimidated that it would be a very complicated process and I thought it would be so difficult. And then I started and I realized that it's really quite simple. Once you make your first knife and then your second knife, where you go from there is up to you. And you can get as complicated and complex and scientific as you want to be. This is for basic knife making and I guarantee once you make your very first knife, the sense of pride and accomplishment of having a good quality usable blade, it's incredible. It's going to be wonderful. With these tools, once we make the knife jig, as well as when we upload the final video on how to make the knife, ask me anything you want and we'll try and get this answered. The goal being that you can make a knife and you will be proud of it. I appreciate you watching today's video guys. Thank you. Cheers.